Hi everybody, my name is Shafka and I am a tutor here at Chad Tutors. Um, I usually uh, tutor subjects such as SAT, ACT, um, Biology, Chemistry, uh, Korean, <laughs> Chinese, um, Psychology, etc. And today, we're going to talk about the topic of visual memory. So what you have here located in this page is a picture of objects. I'm pretty sure that every single one of you will be able to um, name what these objects are, which you will be using because of your visual memory. What is visual memory? Well, visual memory is the ability to remember um, for imme immediate recall the characteristics of a certain object or form. If I gave you 30 seconds to remember all of this and tell me it back in order, would you be able to tell me? Some people probably can because that's just the person they are or their memory is really good. Or um, somebody can't or they probably will only be able to tell me to five, of the, five of the objects or just some of these objects are up until the bucket. Okay, And those with um, really bad visual memory, they probably struggle with comprehension too. So um, what part of our brain? Are a result, well, functions uh, have the function of memory. In this picture right here, you see there are four main lobes of the brain, which are uh, four distinct regions that have a specific activity um, for us to function uh, as part of our brain. So the first one we see right here is this, um, this one in green, which is called the frontal lobe. Okay, the frontal lobe is responsible for organization, concept formation, uh, mental flexibility, personality, uh, abstract reasoning, problem solving, etc. Okay, so this is responsible for that and is one of the youngest and the largest regions in your brain, which is located right inside your forehead, like right here. So this is your front of your brain. Um, we have the parietal lobe right here, which is responsible for reading, calculating, um, attention, you know, spatial navigation, uh, visual perception, etc. That is located behind the uh, frontal lobe, as you can see. And then you have the occipital lobe, which is responsible for everything visually related, which is on the back of your head. Um, this is at the very end right here. The occipital lobe is for everything visual related, like visual processing, perceiving, um, visual discrimination, visual facial skill, um, facial discrimination, etc. You know. And we have the temporal lobe right here, which contains the hippocampus. The hippocampus is um, solely a bunch of the uh, cells inside, like a banana-shaped shell that. Uh, helps with the brain and memory. Uh, the temporal lobe is, like I said before, it's associated with memory, new learning, um, language comprehension, auditory processing, spatial processing, attention, spirit, uh, emotion, etc. Okay. So this, what we see right here, is the region that we are going to be talking about because it's visual memory. So, memory has three stages, which encoding, storage, and retrieval. Encoding is just when information comes into a memory system, which is called a sensory input. Um, it needs to be changed to form a system that we could get used to so that it can be stored. What I mean by that is, uh, for example, I live in the U.S. right now, and if I want to travel to another country, um, to, I don't know, study abroad or something, do work there, uh, I need to change and adapt the system of currency to change to convert my U.S. dollars into whatever country's currency that I'm going to. Uh, if if I don't know, if I'm going to like a Seoul, Korea, I need to change my U.S. Um, dollars into one. Another example of this could be um, words that we see in a book that could be um, encoded later on into a sound or a meaning. And the three ways in which you could change 
uh, information in which information can be changed is visually, sound, audio, or um, by meaning. What I mean by that is I'm going to give you a word that everybody knows, which is the word cat. C A T. Cat. Visually, you see it's cat. Audio, audio, you see cat. Well, you hear cat. Cat, 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 cat. And then you associate a meaning with it, which I will draw a small little quick cat here because I'm not really good at drawing. Alright, I'm sorry, the eyes are crooked. Give me, give me some slack because I don't really know how to draw. Okay, so we have a little cute little cat here. Oops, sorry. We have a cute little cat here. I should have read that. We have a cute little cat. It's more like a fox, but whatever. We have a cute little cat here. Okay? And that will be associated with our meaning. Which, um, which if we tell a one year old kid to repeat the word cat, 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 they wouldn't know what it means because they don't know what it is. But if we associate them with a picture, I assume that you have a better picture than mine. <laughs> then um, the one-year-old toddler would be able to figure out that cat is an animal. Uh, an animal that has fur, that's a lot prettier than this drawing, etc. Okay. So, um, that's another one. The second one we have is memory storage. Storage. So this basically concerns the nature of what the memory stores. Uh, for example, where is the information stored? How long is the memory um, lasts? Or how long can the information be stored for? How much it could be stored for? For how long? Uh, what kind of information can be stored, uh, etc. So the way we store information um, affects the way we receive, retrieve it or um, we tell people about it. For example, I'm going to use this blue pen right here. Um, in your memory, you know that this is a blue pen. Right away, the moment you saw this pen, you know, oh, this is a blue pen because your brain retrieves it um, from your long term memory to tell me or tell the screen that this is a blue pen. Um, so, we're at if we go back to the first example here, if I tell you to retrieve it after 30 seconds, would you be able to um, retrieve it for me? Probably, but um, if I try to retrieve it, I know that there was a red cat, uh, calf, there was a fish shark, there was a swing, a bucket, um, a television, you know, etc. Okay? Then that would be my short term memory. I'm still retrieving it from the brain, it's still stored. It was stored in my brain. So, um, can, fun fact about memory is that most adults can store between five to nine items in their short term memory wise. So, if you tried and just stopped at the screen for um, 30 seconds, trying to remember for 30 seconds, try and see how many um, items you probably would be able to get. The last one that we have right now is the retrieval, memory retrieval, which refers to how we get information out of the storage stage, the second stage that we just go over. If we can't remember something, it's probably because we are unable to retrieve it. Um, for example, have you ever heard of a long lost long-term memory that you cannot remember is because our brain does not does not know how to retrieve it um if i give you an example for example for this the scissor right here okay the scissor if i didn't tell you the scissor and you don't have any memory of knowing that that is a scissor your brain would not be able to retrieve it because it was not stored and it was not encoded into your brain in the first place so this retrieval memory um by looking at something would, wouldn't actually happen. Happen. Um, so, for example, if I gave you this picture, okay, and I 
asked you where memory, I'm not sure some memory, let's try to cross this out, okay? But where memory is located, would you tell me that it's in the prefrontal lobe? Um, or would you tell me it's in the occipital lobe? Or um, parietal lobe? Or temporal lobe? Where is it? You try to remember it. That could be the um, information that was stored when I encoded, when you encoded it into your brain. Okay, but um, those of you who have been listening can tell that right away that um, it was memory is associated with the temporal lobe, which is shown right here. Long circle green. So that's all I have for visual memory today. I am thankful that you went through this whole lesson with me. I hope you learned a lot about visual memory. And um, if you ever need any help, I can always help you. And until next time, bye.